Um, Mayor Dyer says, great job to all city staff for going the extra mile after the windstorm. Public Works and police were very busy securing safe passage ways and the safety of our city. Darcy and Nicole did a great job keeping the senior center open with no power and to provide hot beverages warmer than outside shelter and lunch. <coughs> Having this week shortened, I know, create heavier workload to keep things current. Again, thanks to all city staff for working together for the storm. I am also looking forward to seeing everybody at the tree lighting ceremony on Friday. This is such a great community event and I'm looking forward to seeing what Pacific Partnership has in store for us this year. White River is under watchful eye by the Army Corps, King and Pierce County, as well as our own staff. It's not flooding, just being monitored. I look forward to seeing everybody soon. The Mayor, um, City Administrator, do you have anything to report? Yes, sir. <coughs> <coughs> Good evening. <coughs> the fiscal portion of the budget for 2015 was almost completed today. It wasn't quite completed, but there's a couple of things that John that I want to finish tomorrow. Then we're going to work on the narrative and the graphical portion of it and put that together, and it should be done no later than Wednesday morning, hopeful tomorrow. That will be coming to you guys in the council meeting packet for the meeting for December 1st. The Uniform Union negotiations continue. I canceled the last meeting because of the power outage the week before and the holiday off. We just simply did not have the time to get to that aspect. We still will have an executive session tonight, but it should be really short. I just have two items to go over. Next week we'll have a longer meeting to go over what we're going to propose, what the council wants to propose to the union on the second meeting, I mean the December 2nd meeting. <coughs> I'm working with our personnel attorney and the mayor on preparing an update to the city's personnel policy on the non-union civil service protected employees regarding termination and converting exchange time to management days starting in 2015. That should be coming forward by the 15th of December. The Friday tree lighting will be held at City Hall at 6. I believe it starts at 5.30 though with singing and, and um, food. <coughs> the technology committee were given a presentation from Dave Craig of Avidex on the audiovisual portable system last Thursday. Uh, I think they'll be speaking to this in the report. I just wanted to say that the committee's having me follow up um, with them before we bring this proposal to council. I did speak with the mayor and she seems to be supportive. It's you know it's a little pricier than a cheap version, but it really has a lot of potential. So we'll be talking about that in the upcoming future, hopefully in December as well. <coughs> After recalculating the financial data for the Valley Communications cost in 2014 and then what LT brought forward last week, which is on the agenda tonight, I came up with a new number, but it's not a lot different. It's about $19,000. I actually reduced my budgeted amount because I was too high in the 2015 budget. In 2014, we've been a little low, so it's going to go over budget and we'll amend. I'm going to have, have a budget amendment for you guys on the 15th of December. But we've got enough and it's covered. So I just wanted you to know that and that's something John will be speaking to later. I know that you tasked me with finding out what the real cost was, so I went and added the um, calculations. <coughs> the state audit continues into its third week. We have yet to see the second auditor who will be doing the financial part of the audit, which is a financial statement. Uh, I'm hoping that he comes in soon because I don't want one to be done and have to wait for the other. But it seems like they're a little bit out of schedule. I don't know what's going on, but right now Daryl's working on the, um, the meat of the audit, you know, the accountability. Um, seems to be going okay. <coughs> the, the, okay, I want to also speak to the November 12th power edge. We have a, a board in the hallway, I don't know if you've noticed it up front. It's uh, a who, what we're grateful for or thankful for. And so we're thinking about, I was thinking about the November 12th power outage and how, and Leanne said it, you know, how I'm, I'm grateful for the staff that came in and Darcy and Nicole really, I went over there and you couldn't even tell power that except there was no lights because it was warm enough and people were being fed and it was quite busy. So that was really um, pretty cool that they did that. Um, and Lance was in here making sure that all the public works crews were um, coordinated in their efforts to keep the systems working and he'll speak more to that in his report. But they were working pretty hard and it was really cold in here too. Um, 
and that the police kept everybody protected as best they could because it was some places were impassable. And Stephanie and Sam were also there. And even though they had power, they were helping out in other ways, so that was really pretty good. And Leanne and uh, Angelica came in as well, and so did Paula. Um, and Jim Shunky was a big part of making sure things were running. So I just want to give a you know, shout out to our staff for going through it, coming through on that, because it was, like I said, the, the situation in here was pretty bad, but it was nice that they hung around to do that. We are having ongoing discussions with committees on power backup and purchasing generators down the road. Because I think, even though we may not need them more than once or twice a year, if we can work out a way to have them, it'll give us more, you know, support and backup, especially with the, the, the community service centers and with the servers, so that we can actually do work. Initially, we've been told that the power is going to be out until Friday night, which we would have been we'd have lost three days of work plus the holiday. I'd have been working with no sleep to get the budget done now, but without a server. So I don't want that to be in jeopardy again. And I'm hoping we can look at a way that we can do that with minimal cost. I just want to say one thing about <coughs> the parks budget concerns that I heard tonight. And I looked through the numbers, and uh, one thing, there's a lot more to it than what appears on the surface. And I can explain that. I'm not sure we're going to have time to explain that at the meeting on Monday. It would be better to sit down with me and go over that. If you want to make the time, I do have staff answering your questions right now. Um, not, and I, also, I think you're overlooking the 305 fund, which is where all the capital um, budget amounts are in. I and mean, there's not a lot in there right now, but that's the area, too, where we usually address equipment and parks um, that aren't related to maintenance. Okay, so just wanted to say that. And I will be bringing what I can on Monday, but time is really limited, so I'll do the best I can to have those questions answered. You know, we're not we're closed Thursday and Friday, so we're going to try it and get them done. <laughs> Hard to turn my neck all the way around, but to get them all done by then, but we'll do our best. So, thank you. Any questions? Just uh, that uh, provide <coughs> some addition, some cooperation with the park board to make sure that they understand what it's Sure. Because it is one important <coughs> at least on mine. Sure. And I and I will, and I and I try to do that. It's, right now we're just in a big yeah. time crunch, but we'll do what we can to have it too. But it might be Monday when we get it. So if you want to. You know, talk with me then. We'll see what we can do to have you. Thanks. Thank you. Any uh, courts? <coughs> Evening. Sure. Um, thank you for sending myself and Judge Sean to the judges and the administrator conference last week. Sessions that we attended were effective leadership team, general rule 29, which is judicial independence. Court security, and then a proposed General Rule 35 regarding standards that they're trying to set. Um, general Rule 15, which is destruction, stealing, and redaction of court records. Proposed Rule uh, 31.1, access to court administrative records, and records management and data dissemination. I'm afraid to hear about other court concerns compared to ours and collaborate on the solution. It sounds like it was really dry, and a lot of it was, but there were some interesting things that came out with the public records. So, things are changing all the time. Anybody have any questions? <coughs> Thank you very much. Good evening. Um, public uh, safety.
Criminal Justice Training Commission has changed their philosophy in the basic law enforcement academy and that Sue Rohr now runs the, is the director of uh, the commission and she's, she was the King County Sheriff and she's got some good ideas. So they've gone away from the, they call it the warrior mentality, now it's the guardian mentality and they've changed directions completely. So we sat through, you know, it's four hours of that. We had social media and crisis response, which was out of four hours. And uh, then we had a legal update, which kind of sucked up some of the big legal issues that are going on right now. touch briefly on the windstorm and I'll pass around a synopsis of what the police did during the windstorm. It was, it was extremely busy and uh, if you have questions after you read this synopsis, I'll be glad to answer them. So we did have our power generator did go down in the public safety building uh, about 10 o'clock that night and that's unusual, it's never happened before. We did get a, a technician out immediately and he had it up and running two hours later, but it, it was a, it was, I can appreciate the fact that some of the buildings have generators because we rely on that uh, throughout the entire windstorm. Then uh, I've got a notice today from the Army Corps engineer. They say that the White River I don't know that it's going to flood. They're saying it's at least 7,000 feet, cubic feet per second, and that's it's a lot of water right now. It's like 7,000 feet per second. I'm not sure why. There's a storm coming in, and we're White Rivers, one of the rivers that they're watching, and they're going to they've got a team of spotters. They'll, they'll monitor it during the night, and we'll monitor it during the night, and then there's a group of spotters that's ready to come out in the morning. Just an FYI. Do you have any questions for John? I have a question. <clears throat> well, was there a lot of damage throughout Pacific? I mean, I know I saw fences blocked or blown over and um, trees down. And there was. I have no idea what the value of the damage, but there was a lot of property damage, mainly from the fallen trees. Uh, a few houses had trees land on them, but you know I don't know. I think maybe within a month we'll get a I can kind of get an idea of the amount of damage. But yes, there was. Any other questions, John? Thank you. Public Works. Good evening. Well, I think I'll pick up with uh, start with the, the storm report a little bit, just to iterate a little bit what's already been said. Um, first, I'd just like to thank the crews that were out here. They did an awesome job, and uh, I think you should be proud of them. They. I, did a good service for, for the residents here. Um, one of the things that I'll, I'll add, what John had already said, is with the tree damage that was around, it's still trickling in a little bit, so there's still a little bit of cleanup and a little bit of interaction uh, with the citizens as we're, we're going forward and getting, getting through this. Um, on the power outage, of course, Richard already talked about City Hall. 
But another important aspect of this is the uh, sewer pump stations, that they do not have emergency backup capability. And the crews had to, we had to schedule uh, contract uh, pump trucks to come in and help prevent uh, an overflow or a spill. So that's something I definitely want to make you aware of and something that we should talk about further going, going forward. Uh, but all in all, I think it was a good tune-up, and hopefully we don't see too many more of these uh, this winter, but you never know. And I think, as John also mentioned, uh, we're, we too are monitoring the White River and the, the Corps' uh, release of the water over the next few days. So we're, we're on, on tap and watching it and keeping our fingers crossed that there's not a lot of rain to, to add to the river flows. Uh, this is just a very preliminary advisory uh, comment that I'll be attending uh, a Stewart Road Advisory Committee that's uh, sponsored by Sumner. And this is my first meeting, and it's meeting tomorrow. But essentially what they're meeting is to try to coordinate uh, the effort for the next phase of the Stewart Road uh, reconstruction effort, which is um, Valentine and across the river and the bridge. So that segment of the, the roadway on the Stewart Road corridor is the next phase that they're looking to coordinate. And I think as you can all appreciate with federal money and state money being so tight, it's very important to have a good coordinated effort. And so I'll learn more about the effort and where we're at and where this project is at, but that, that's a meeting that I'm, I'm attending tomorrow. Um, also, uh, Council Member uh, Oliveira and I had a conversation about uh, this particular air, air quality project here for City Hall, and she made me aware of a, a grant opportunity that I, I wasn't uh, aware of, and it was through the Environmental Protection Agency, and it was through the Brownfields program that they administer, and it's geared primarily for um, land cleanup for an area that may have some industrial use on it as well. But as I investigated this, I learned that some communities have applied and been successful in um, getting grant monies for um, asbestos abatement. So that was very interesting to me, and I, I pursued it a little bit further, talked to some folks at the EPA, and unfortunately, it, it doesn't appear that the timing is such this year that uh, we would benefit from going through the application. It, it's a pretty extensive process. The application would be due the 19th or 20th, I, I forget which day on, uh, in December. And there just physically isn't enough time to really do a good, solid application. Um, additionally, there wasn't a guarantee or a solid answer that we would be successful in, in getting a grant. But there is another aspect that I will uh, pursue as a result of just learning a little bit uh, more, is Department of Ecology in the state has a revolving fund program. So there's a, a low interest, maybe even zero interest loan uh, to look at this as asbestos abatement. So I don't have a lot of information to share on that, but I'm pursuing it and I'll report back further as I, I learn more about this opportunity. That's Public Works.
and, and that's a consulting team that is familiar with the grant application, knows what the EPA is looking for, has the proper verbiage and, and all the key phrases to, to include in, in the grant application. My estimate of my time, if I singularly focused on it, um, I would have to triple that estimate and that would be my sole focus and to be honest, I don't feel that I can commit that level of time. I have a question related to the storm. Um, has the city crews gone out and looked around and maybe did an assessment for weakened trees and things like that? Because I've seen a couple along Pacific Avenue that's really on the Algona property, but they got a pretty good lean going towards the road. And I'm thinking another good wind or a lot of rain because that's usually what we can end up with, a lot of rain weakens the bottom of these trees. And <clears throat> kind of wondering whether we should maybe be a little proactive and kind of look at some of those locations and keep an eye on them when we got storms coming in. Because I think we're going to see some of those additional weakened trees go down. So just a heads up. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, what's our portable generator status? Portable, what do we have active and, and what do we have available? There is a um, generator that uh, I won't call it surplus, but that it's available to for a potential future use here at, at City Hall. Uh, when an upgrade at the well field occurred a few years ago and the new uh, well equipment was installed, that a generator was purchased at that time and that left the former generator uh, available for another use. It's an approximately 100 kW generator, so it's, it's pretty good size and can su supply a substantial amount of the power needs here or, or elsewhere. Um, but it hasn't been uh, really earmarked, nor has a uh, I guess a, a study or a project put together of what it would look like to be able to bring that generator back into use here at this building or as on a trailer mounted where it could service also the, uh, the sewage lift station. That's what I was thinking. Is if we have portable generators to go to the lift stations, if we had a significant power outage that we were the last day, <coughs> or is that a need? I, I'm sorry, could you? I missed the last part of that. Do we have? the generators available to be able to station at the lift stations and put the service to keep them operating or is that a need that we need to look at? It's a need. We do not have those generators at this time. And, and then the other aspect of that is making sure that the lift stations have the available equipment to uh, operate on standby power, meaning the, the plug-ins, the pigtails, and, and all the other gear that goes with that. And securing the generators. Because they're kind of out in the open, aren't they? The, the station? Yeah. Yes. I have one other question. Um, throughout the storm and whatnot, um, the gentleman, Richard, over at Guy's Market, placed up a flag that was in the middle of the street. And then a resident down here on the corner of Butte in the. Third? Thank you. Police set two. Um, is that your department on the flights that are all up along the pole out front, uh, running the street? I honestly don't know. I know Richard. Uh, John, can you help me on this one? I, I don't know. I don't know. Because of it works. No, no, because I believe Jim Shanky was helping to put them up and down. Specific partnerships. Okay. So those all need to come down. And wh whoever is in charge. Oh. Um, can I have the torn ones given to me so that I can have them properly retired? I, I don't know who it is. Okay. I'm just going to make a general statement. If it's a Pacific Partnership, I talk, I'll talk to a member who has right. on need, staff and put them in contact with, with you, or if this is a request, we'll, we'll look at what that can entail. Okay. 